Astonishment from Community. Hi, everybody. I'm Aaron Fisher, and welcome to Afternoon Astonishments from Conjurer Community, the world's best magic club. This is the show where we dive into mind-blowing magic performed by the world's top magicians. If you haven't already, hit subscribe and like and all the good buttons to make sure that you're here all the time when we have these exciting adventures together. Today, we're going to be watching some mind-blowing magic from our good friend, Larry Wilmore. Alex, what did you pick out? Well, Larry did some uh, wonderful stuff for us that was really not only magic, but it was also an exploration into character and how just how to be a performer. Because Larry, as you know, he's he's a TV star. <laughs> and he did a lot of things that got him to be a TV star. And uh, he also really loves magic, which is really a gift for us. And I feel like that that's what that whole lecture that we had here at CC was all about. It was just a big gift. And it was a really... Uh, a different point of view that you don't normally get so it was, it was a lot of fun and uh i think that this first trick that some folks might be familiar with from another very popular performer but you'll see that larry has a way of making it his own and not only making it his own presentation wise but also making it his own technique wise and he simplified some things but i think that the results still stand up this is a beautiful thing check it out we were talking about this and part of there how he is. come up with ideas is I find something a bit difficult for me <laughs> or, or what I call sweaty for me when I'm doing it. So I would come up with a way that for me kind of works. So I take, as I thought, I take all the sweatiness out of it, you know. And this was one of those tricks. Um, I don't know if you guys are, are familiar with the uh, Waving the uh, Queens. And the way that I do it is I talk about twisting my aces is one of my favorite tricks, you know. And the way that twisting my aces works, it's just a classic. The magician would twist the cards and one at a time, the cards would turn over. Beautiful trick. And I have to admit, it requires a, a certain amount of sleight of hand, you know, and it can be a little tricky, but I thought, what if you did it without using sleight of hand? What if you just held the cards and imagined them twisting? And just by imagining them twisting, it would actually turn over. It'd be kind of cool, like, so I'm just gonna imagine the cards twisting, and just by imagining them twisting, one actually, oh, there it goes. Oh, wow. <laughs> Was that applause out there? I can't yeah. see. <laughs> oh, yeah, there it goes, thank you very much. They're putting all those ones in the, uh... In the I'll, chat do I'll do it again because maybe maybe it happened too fast. Some people didn't see it, you know. So all you have to do is imagine. Nobody's looking at this hand. <laughs> They're all looking over here. But it doesn't matter. Just imagine twisting, and as you imagine it, you'll just see that other card just slowly turn over. So two faces. Yeah. Face this way. Are those ones? Is that applause again, guys? Yes, lots of it. Lots of it. They like this. They it's like a strange it. sound, isn't it? I know. Great. Now, a lot of people say, Larry, are those cards really turning over? And I have to admit, no, they are not. What's really happening is they're slowly becoming the other side. A distinction without a difference. I'll show you what I mean. Two face up, two face down. As I bring it closer to you, you'll see the card slowly turn over. Slowly turn over as it goes close to you. <laughs> they shouted, we want to learn that. Yeah. <laughs> okay, the final one is a little tricky, and some people think I'm cheating here. They say, Larry, are you like flicking it with your thumb? Is it happening well? I said, okay, here's another bit. I'll place it here, so there's nothing I can do about it, but it really doesn't matter. In the amount of time it takes for the cards to go from there to there, it happens. You know? Whoa. So there's one. Wow. There's two. There's three. And there's four. That's great. And Fantastic. And he's not even doing it in tails and a top hat. <laughs> it's true. It's Isn't that true. something? You know, I have to just tell you all, this is a, a version that Larry's doing of Guy Hollingworth's so Waving the Aces. I, uh, Adam and I both, when we were like, what, 23 years old, I remember sitting and trying to learn this trick from Guy, like one-on-one, -on -one, and not having any ability to do it at all. But... I was able to learn it from Larry. So, I mean, that's even beside the point, because really, just <laughs> as a performance, right? Isn't he like a fun and laid-back dude watching him do, like, heavy-duty card stuff? It is really true. And you know what really is amazing is that that's in the back room. That is in Contra Community. It's like a little secret hidden gem. I forgot it was there. Yeah, I did too. <laughs> but I learned it that night, and I could never learn it before. Did you notice that when Larry, she said, like, sweaty? Do you remember yeah, when he yeah. was sweating? He's like a real comedian. So he knows how to be honest. And it's just, he said that in a way that's something all magicians know about that feeling he's talking I about. I was wondering why I don't use that term more often. That's right. But magicians don't like 
call the room. They don't uh, ever like say that, but he was able. Here's another thing about Larry, aside from his magic and his wonderful energy and his intelligence and his comedy, he's also an incredibly tall, confident guy. Which, as you know, would make him successful in many fields. And he has <laughs> the best appearance in the office of anybody. His his office appearance is amazing. So as oh, did actor, you mean like his home office or his appearance oh, in the office? Yeah, when he was in that show, The Office, yeah. Yeah, uh, he made all these jokes that we can't even repeat, but they were funny. No, the, the bit's great. I mean, his, his scene is great. His whole episode is great. <laughs> He's a great card guy. When I first uh, met him at the castle... He would always just come in there and just be like, in the books, deep, you know. He was, he was, in it. I was curious, is that how you is that how you know Aaron? Like when you walk into a room, if you see the guys, if the guys that have their heads in the books, are they usually the ones that are, you know, the serious ones? Uh, well, I I don't know about that. I know that a lot of us. I know this. This is something we often say: is that folks that are in to the card stuff, if you're drawn to it all by itself that tends to be like you know how like humans gestate for a long time and then they like stay at home for like 15 or in my case 10 years you know being raised by your parents you know sometimes 18 you know what i mean like the yeah. human animal stays in the nest a long time relative to other animals i would say relative to other kinds of magicians the sleight of hand artist gestates the longest time. The sleight of hand artist can be interested in magic practicing for 12 hours a day without ever showing a trick longer than any other type of magician, right? Totally. Steve, I resemble that, that remark. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, totally. Steve, which type were you, Steve? <laughs> oh, I mean, I, I, I probably a little of both, to be honest with you, but there's been stuff I've worked on forever and never showed anybody. I feel like Steve and Adam... <laughs> were like born showmen. They were like popping out and doing the song and dance. It was a difficult delivery. Yeah. <laughs> Cesarean. I said it was a difficult delivery for my mother. You, you uh, it came out like this. You, know? you guys, these guys are all musicians too. So here's a quick question. Are musicians like that? Or do you, are there different types of musicians too? Are there musicians that would get out there and play before they know how any of the songs go as well? Like they do in magic. There's there plenty of them. I don't know if it's generally the rule, though. <laughs> They're probably not the rule. But well, let's Mike, watch Mike. another one of these Larry tricks. You know a few guys like that, don't you, Mike? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I've seen a few of those. Yeah. It's messed up. You know, I admire those people. I wish I was one of those people. The yeah, let's, let's watch another one, you guys. You want to? Hell yeah. 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 This this one, like, this one will uh, make you pay attention. <laughs> I had to pay attention to the last one. He he wasn't that confident at his card magic when I met him. This was years later. Years later, right? Well, you know magic. That first handful of years, things change. Mm -hmm. yes. You know, three years in, it doesn't even, later, you wouldn't even recognize yourself. Okay. Aaron, you going to help me out with this? Absolutely. Sure. Okay, Aaron. It's, you know, Aaron, I have to say, this is not really a trick. It really isn't. It's really, you know what it is? It's really more like a couple of questions. First two questions, by the way, are really simple. Last one's a little tricky, so you got to pay attention, okay? Mm -hmm. okay? Aaron, what is the color of this ace? Uh -oh. right. Wrong. African-American. Take your time, Aaron. It's okay. Don't worry about it. It's fine. No, just, <laughs> just, it's okay. Relax. Aaron, relax. It's a joke. <laughs> relax, okay? All right, Diamond let's open. try it again. <laughs> what is the suit of this ace? And keep in mind, we're just a little bit on edge right now. Ah. Just a little joke, Aaron. I'm just kidding. You're not a racist. Don't worry about it. You're not, Aaron. You're not. It's a, it's a ah. joke. Okay? All right, Aaron. Here's the tricky question. Remember I said the tricky question, okay? Which ace should be on top? The ace of spades or the ace of clubs? It's a tricky question. Which ace should be on top? Ace of spades or ace of clubs? Uh, clubs. Should be. It should yeah. be the ace of clubs. You didn't see me switch it then, right? No. Oh, because I switched it for the other ace. The ace of diamonds. See, the ace of hearts is there. It couldn't be these two because that wouldn't be politically correct. So it's an oldie, it's a goodie, it's a standard that we probably have all performed in one way or another and may still, but definitely a different presentation. <laughs> it's yeah. it's one of those Larry Wilmore presentations, you know what I mean? Like if we say we could do it, which we can't, we'd be like, hey, you're doing like a Larry Wilmore presentation of that trick. And you would say that whether you'd ever seen Larry do 
card tricks before. Yeah, it's definitely like his own flavor there. He definitely uh, dances around things in that particular way. It's yeah. yeah. Totally but right. I did, but I also noticed guys because I can't help but to be like a card magician. I was like, wow, Larry's got excellent misdirection for that. Mm -hmm. I bet Larry was had that excellent misdirection for that trick years before, you know, he could even have the technique down. You know, he had that misdirection from day one. That's strong misdirection. When you hear those questions, you think. <laughs> you <It's> know, <laughs> uh, it's pretty funny. I felt like I was in the office. It's an oldie, yeah. but a goodie. Oldie, but a goodie. What's the uh, third one? Let's watch one more. We've got one more big one, right? Ambitious, yeah. yes. This one, this one's got something you guys are all going to remember. We spent a lot of time because we all loved it, but there's a little interlude in this trick that uses a, a different prop along with a deck of cards that you're going to remember as soon as you see it. But we all loved it and we all spent so much time working on it because we loved it. I remember doing it for everyone I knew. <laughs> so check this out. You're going to see this. This is a really a, just a beautiful presentation of this uh, particular plot. Very good. I want to show you guys. Um, this is kind of my, it's a nice kind of utility thing that I have. I put on the table sometimes. Keep coins and rubber bands and stuff like that. Um, but you can have this, if you have some like this, you can just keep it on the table and just use it. And it's just kind of nice, you know, just kind of a nice thing that I got. I'll tell you where to get it later. But I'm going to use these rubber bands a little later. So get, oh, let me move back. So you can see. You guys can see, right? Okay. Um, so what I'm going to, I'll do, um, I was gonna, well, maybe I'll just get into it, but the thing that I'm gonna end with is another one of those things that I came up with um, because I needed to find a way to do something. So that's what I'm gonna show you right now. Um, so let's show the deck. And uh, Aaron, go ahead and just say stop as I go through here. Stop. Okay, you want the ace, the queen, or the deuce? Um, I can't see the suits, is the deuce or what? Oh, ace of hearts, easy. Ace of hearts, okay. Make Big sure. old heart. You said, okay. And we make sure there's just one ace of hearts. This isn't one of those like magic decks and that type of thing. I don't want people to, to think that type of thing. Um, this is the routine I perform for Lehman Bell. Okay, so you you said stop pretty soon. That card was maybe about 33, I think about 33 from the top. It's actually an ambitious card. It's moving right now. It's about, it's about 27 from the 23rd from the top. It's, like, it's, actually, it's actually 19th. From the top, if I, but whoa, the card just doing this, I can, ooh, I can, it's 11 from the top. It's really amazing just how the card just, if I were to stop right now, it'd be fifth from what? What's that? The, it's third from the, what was your card? Ace of Hearts. Ace of Hearts. Now made its way to the top as an ambitious card. Now, I'll show you how I did that. A lot of you know, all you have to do is uh, take the ace, place it a, uh, Somewhere in the middle, let's think about halfway down. So it's not on the top, you know. And you just wait, you just snap. It's the snap that makes it come to the top. You just wait a little bit and, huh, there it goes. Come right to the top. Sound applause? No? Absolutely. No applause? Okay. All right, it doesn't even have to go in the middle. You can just take that and place it second. It really doesn't matter because watch very slowly. Boom. Mm -hmm. Nice. Come on. Okay. Oh, yay, yay. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. Okay, let's do it one more time. Let's place the card in the mouth. That is the ace parts. Just so you can see. Place in the mouth. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. You know, let's start over. Let's do it again. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay. <laughs> let's actually place it on the bottom right here. Uh, so it's not on the top. All I do is I push the button, and the card takes the elevator, and comes right to the top. <laughs> it was sticky, so it was kind of stuck. Now, it doesn't have to take the elevator, guys. You can actually have the card take the escalator, still come to the top. All it's right, the yeah. It just really <laughs> <laughs> Now we're getting a little book. Now, somebody say, Larry, you're doing these tricks, but, you know, you're a magician. You know, man, you're manipulating the cards, you know? I said, okay, I'll tell you what, I'll use this rubber band. I won't manipulate the cards. I'll, I'll tie the deck up. I won't do anything. And we'll cease because all it is is the snapping that makes it come to the top, right? So one, two, three, cards. Wow, yeah. <laughs> really, really, really.
And nice. that's kind of a couple of uh, sequences of uh, the ambitious card, um, you know, that I've kind of worked out. Um, the, um, oh, you know what? Let me show you guys. Oh, you know what? Um, Aaron, do me a favor. Yes, sir. Go ahead and shuffle the cards. You take it. Through the power? Yes. Go ahead and shuffle. Through the Wait. power yeah. of magic. All right, mixed. Go ahead and go ahead and cut them. And cut. more. Okay. <laughs> this is gonna be impossible, you guys. All you do is what? You snap, turn over the top card. Am I right? Seven of clubs. Seven of clubs. Something went wrong. Oh, you know what it is, guys. <laughs> Sometimes I'm guilty of snapping too hard. You know what happens? Remember that utility box I told you about earlier? Or now there's something in it with those coins. I want you to see there's one little card in here, kind of folded up. And that card, of course, happens to be. Still killing me now. Wait, killing you softly? Yeah, he's killing me. <laughs> you know. You know what's so great about him? Is tell me, tell me. He's just so casual. Right? He just, isn't this how magic is supposed to be, in my opinion? We're ha we feel like we're just having a talk with Larry. And next thing you know, a card, you know. I love that slapping it with the rubber band thing. That he thing is, that that, on that's there. what I was talking about. That's, I that remember is. spending some time on it because it's such a beautiful little little moment with a card and the rubber I love beard. it. It's a little harder than it looks. It's hard to do, Alex. <laughs> What's the effect? A little harder, little, little harder to do than it looks. What's yeah. it look yeah. like you do to your audience? You put the rubber band around your hand? You put the rubber band around the deck and around your hand, and then you slap the deck onto the table, and now the card is on the back of your hand under the rubber band. Must be automatic, face right? Up. Face up. Yeah. Yeah. Face up. yeah. yeah. One, one thing you notice about Larry, to Steve's point, and this is, I think, one of the best lessons for anyone who's you guys think most people watching this are mad magicians? Hope so. Yeah. That's probably a good, uh, good uh, percentage. Most of them, right? I feel like one thing, Larry, he's like a super pro comedian. Mm. And one of the things about working on Zoom or on screen is no matter how many people are out there enjoying it, you don't get any of that live action that you really get when you're in a room doing magic for people. It's all... Sort of, you're, you just got to imagine that they're with you. And one of the things that I noticed just that Larry is better that than anybody is knowing how to work in that silence and fill it yourself with entirely your own energy. Because mm. a lot of times when real performers get up and try and work on screen or for a dead room, it's uh, they, they say it's a soul sapping, difficult experience you're just throwing all your energy out into the hole and it doesn't give anything back you know you have to really just have your own energy and larry is riding his own train you know he's talking he's having a conversation with himself it's a it's a really astonishing thing you know so quick quiz what was your favorite larry wilmore trick alex i think it's still the rubber band thing it's just that little little piece but that's my favorite thing mm -hmm. <laughs> i love that Mike? I'm with Alex. I like the rubber band. <laughs> Adam? No, uh, waving the aces. I, I love that. And Steve? Did you pick one? <laughs> he doesn't have a favorite? Ah. Me? Do I have a favorite? Is that what you're yeah, asking? Yeah, that's what I was asking. Your name's Steve? Yeah. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with the the rubber band thing. I mean, I worked on it for a while. It's just such a. I could see myself using that. You know. Excellent. Well, I I don't know. I like watching that waving the aces. I feel like it's just such a pretty trick the way he does it. I actually like them all. Thanks for joining us today. Do us a quick favor and click the follow or subscribe button so you'll be notified the next time we go live, which will be in a couple days. See you soon. Good afternoon, Mr.